Midas was a mythological king whose touch turned anything to gold. This brought him loads of fun and fortune until it came to eating, when he discovered that a 24 karat meal wasn't exactly digestible. That said, gold is a commodity that has shaped Africa's destiny, and many dishes take on a golden glow when they're cooked to perfection. All this gave Utica plenty of food for thought, and this week she presents a menu inspired by the idea of gold for Africa. Africa Day celebrates unity, tradition and the history of our continent. When I think Africa, I think beautiful sunshine and a precious metal gold. And that's where I take my inspiration. On the menu today, sweet potato and prawn cakes, saffron palau, and to go with that for dessert, a Josie cake. I've heated a pan, some sunflower oil going in, and then a bay leaf, cinnamon stick, and about four cardamom pods. You could also use crushed cardamom for this. Heat the whole spices. This aroma is just amazing. And whole spices can hold a lot more heat than powdered spices. So fry them until they turn the shade darker. Sliced onion. I'm keeping this pilau quite simple. I want the flavors and the color of the saffron to come through. Fry the onions until they light golden in color. And to speed that along, just a pinch of salt. And that speeds up the browning. You don't need to finely chop the onions for this. Onion slices work nicely. And just ensure they're golden brown in color. I enjoy quite spicy pilaus, but today I'm keeping it quite light. The cardamom pods have flavored the oil. It's best to remove them from the oil at this point. Count them in, count them out. The onions are brown, green chili, and garlic. Lightly fry the garlic until it's fragrant, and the oil's quite hot, so just take care not to burn it. In goes the chicken. I'm using fresh chicken fillet for this. The frozen fillet tends to have too much water, which causes the chicken to boil. The chicken's starting to brown. Some fresh thyme going in. Just a few sprigs. To this, some lemon juice. The rice. I'm using a cup and a half of the smarty rice for this. Stir the rice through and chicken stock. You could also use water. Stir the rice into the stock and just gently push the rice grains into the liquid. You don't want hard bits of rice in your pilau. Now snap peas going on top. I love sneaking a few veggies into my pilaus. Baby corn. Beautiful saffron liquid. I've heated the saffron, crumbled it lightly, and steeped it in boiling water. This really does remind me of the African sunshine. You can see the yellow coming through already. Some aromatic garam masala going on top. I've added a touch of chili flakes to mine as well, just to slightly spice it up. Cover the pot with a tight-fitting lid, reduce the heat, and let it steam through until the rice is tender. For the sweet potato and prawn cakes, I've got some boiled grated sweet potato here. This is orange flesh sweet potato, but you could use the white flesh as well. Season that with salt. Next, some spring onion, chopped coriander, green chili. I'm not going to use my fingers for that. Grated ginger. The ginger works really well with the sweet potato. One beaten egg self-raising flour and rice flour going in next. Use a tablespoon and I'm just sort of smushing those ingredients together. Now, coconut milk. You could also use coconut cream. Between 200 and 250 mils. You don't want this batter to be too runny. These sweet potato cakes should be served piping hot. I'm gonna fry them off just before serving. You also add the prawns one at a time before you drop them into the hot oil. This is my very own creation. I call it the Josie cake. For that, I've got some soft butter in a mixing bowl. 
lightly work the batter until it's light. Gradually add the sugar. When you're making this cake, always ensure the ingredients are at room temperature. The butter's light and fluffy. Now, I've got six egg yolks in here. Add them slowly. This has come together quite nicely. It's quite a yellowy mixture because of the egg yolks and butter. In goes some vanilla paste. And add the baking powder to the flour and a pinch of salt. Not too much salt, I'm also using salted butter for this. Beat those ingredients together. Use a tablespoon and lightly work the flour, baking powder and salt together. Half the flour going into the batter. And use a spatula to work those ingredients together. Half the milk going in. And again, very gently stir this. It does look like the batter's split. As soon as the flour starts to absorb the liquid, it comes together quite nicely. The remaining flour going in. Just swirl that around again with the spatula. It's important not to overwork this batter or the cake will be quite heavy. Remaining milk going in. six egg yolks earlier and here's the whites. I've beaten them with about three tablespoons of sugar until they're stiff. About a third of that egg going in. At this stage it's important not to overwork the batter or all those lovely air bubbles will be lost. The first bit of egg white loosens the batter and then you can add the rest. These light and fluffy egg whites Add a luscious texture to the cake. Buttery cakes can be quite heavy and dense. The egg whites really do the trick. There we go. The batters come together. It's smooth, silky and lump-free. I've greased and lined 350 cm baking tins. I've used non-stick spray for this. Just divide that batter into the tins. Gently shake the tins just to make sure the batter's level. Tip tap down on the counter. Bake these off in a preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius for 25 to 30 minutes. While the cakes are cooling off, I'm going to fry the sweet potato and prawn cakes. I've heated up some sunflower oil here. And to this, take a prawn pop it into the sweet potato mixture. Just lightly coat it in the sweet potato batter and drop that into the hot oil. You could also finely chop the prawn and mix that into the sweet potato. It does feel a bit like a treat when you find a whole prawn in the cake. Gently shake the pan. I love potatoes, but I have to say that sweet potato works best for this recipe. And if you can't find the orange flesh sweet potato, use the ordinary one. It will work just fine. You could also spice it up with a bit of extra chili as well. You can see this lovely golden color coming through. The rice flour makes the coating of these quite crisp. And they are ready. My fingers can take a fair bit of heat. Please don't try this at home unless you're used to doing it. That's the last fritter. To serve the fritters, put them onto a pretty platter and serve them with some lime or lemon wedges. You could also lightly dust them with cinnamon. Cinnamon also works quite well with sweet potato, but I prefer them plain. I love getting my kids involved with decorating cakes. Okay, what I need you to do 
is to dunk these meringues in here and just swirl them around so they're coated. Okay. Tanvi, how's your chocolate sauce going? Great. Perfect. Okay, first cake going onto the platter. Just remove the baking paper. Pop that down. Smear that over. Next layer going on top. A little more frosting going on top. The last layer going on top. Now for the fun part. This is a great cake to get your kids into the kitchen to help with. You can use sweets, leftover macaroons, if there are ever any, some meringue as well, chocolate, and whatever decorations you'd like to use. And that's the Josie cake done. This is the first time I've prepared an Africa Day feast and I'm going to make it a new tradition in my home. Not only does it look like sunshine on a plate, I also got to bring some sunshine into my kitchen and spend some time with my kids. What better way to celebrate?